So the cat is finally out of the bag. These are the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 Pro, the newest phones by Google. And we still don't have the phones, but I wanted to talk to you about what Google announced because I think these phones look really, really good this year. And you probably already know some of the specs. There's been like a million leaks before the event. So the gist of it is these are flagship phones with a new processor and improved cameras. But here's what impressed me the most. These phones, despite all the changes on the market, remain at the same price. And particularly for the smaller Pixel 7, this is a big deal. At $600, this phone is an absolute steal and you're getting some insane deals too. You can get the Pixel Watch at a lower price if you bundle it with this phone and more. Check out the links in the description, I'll have all of those there. But yeah, so what's new with the Pixel 7? The first thing is just the design. The phone is now 6.3 inches, so it's a bit smaller than before and a bit lighter too, so that is great news. I still think Google could go even smaller to 6.1 inches to match the iPhones of the world, but this is also very nice and while it's not exactly compact, it is an improvement if you want a smaller phone. And the design is very similar to the previous generation. You still have that camera strip on the back easy to recognize in a crowd, plus with it the phone doesn't wobble when you lay it flat on a table, and the camera strip is now a part of the frame, and previously on the Pixel 6 it was a separate piece, if you look closer you can see it, and now it's just a more integral part of the frame. The screen is flat, which I appreciate, 6.3 inches, but it's not an LTPO screen, so no dynamic refresh rate here. It turns at 90 hz though, which is not quite as smooth as 120, but honestly I think 90 is just good enough for most people and it gets pretty bright too. 1400 nits peak brightness, great for the outdoors. Under the hood you get the new Tensor G2 chip, which is slightly faster than the first generation, but really what matters more is the new functions it unlocks, which are better voice recognition, better Google Assistant experience, nice to see. My favorite improvement is to the camera though, as night mode is now nearly two times faster and if you've used the Pixel 6 before you know how frustratingly slow it can get, so I'm really glad that Google is fixing that. Also you have a new 2x zoom but without an actual zoom lens, so the phone just uses the middle section of the big main camera sensor and gets this superb quality, much like the iPhone 14 Pro does with its 2x zoom solution, and this should work great for portraits in particular. Now one thing I'm slightly concerned for is battery life. Now the Pixel 7 has a slightly smaller battery than before. It's around 4350 mAh and it used to be around 4600, but Google says this is an all day phone, so fingers crossed. You can also use the extreme battery saver and get up to 3 days with that. So this is the Pixel 7. I think the big limiting factor for phones in this class was just the lack of a zoom camera. And now with the 2 times zoom option, the Pixel 7 addresses that and I really think this might be my favorite phone of the year. Alright, but what about the big boy Pixel 7? Pro. 6.7 inch screen, heavier weight but bigger battery and a third camera for long range zoom. The price for that is $900, so quite a bit more expensive than the vanilla version. However, if you compare it to galaxies and iPhones of the same caliber, it's at least $200 cheaper, so again, good value. The screen here is upgraded to LTPO and 120Hz, the 5000mAh battery will surely last a bit longer and the zoom camera is now slightly longer at 5 times zoom. And Google now stabilizes it if you go beyond that and uses algorithms for super clean photos and it maxes out at 30 times digital zoom. Otherwise the Pixel 7 Pro has the same Tensor G2 and mostly the same functions as the vanilla model, but the RAM here is 12 gigs versus 8 gigs on the regular one, so the Pro is definitely more capable for multitasking. But yeah, overall these two feel very refined. Colors look super nice on both of them. Google promises a faster fingerprint sensor, which was the main complaint last year and has finally added face unlock. I'm really excited about these pixels, Google really seems committed to this lineup. You're also getting the very first Google made Pixel watch, but more on that later, and a full review of these new pixels are coming a bit later as well. So now's the time to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out these future videos and yeah, let me know your thoughts about the pixels. Are you as excited as I am? And are you ready to switch to a Pixel if you're currently using a different phone? So that's been it, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.